Unicorns. Michelle here with Unicorns Fit. You can find us at www.unicornsfit.com. You can also find us on Facebook. We have a page, we have a group, so join our group and give us a like and uh, we can all catch up together. Um, today I want to go over the basic steps it takes in order to do um, the glazed coat that I like. It looks like somebody took a sheet of glass and melted it over the top of your table. It makes it super durable. It's water resistant and heat resistant up to 120 degrees. It looks like 70 layers of polyurethane, except perfect. It's crazy beautiful. Um, the product that I chose to use after my years of experience with um, two part epoxies, and trust me, I've tried them all, um, I've decided that my very favorite one is Pamela Wood. They make glaze coat. You can get it at Lowe's, and that's where I had originally found it. And it seems to be the easiest one to use. What you need in order to do it, of course, you're going to need your surface to be dry. Any paint you have dry, any polyurethane you have on it dry, um, any Mod Podge like I used here to apply this wall decal dry. Um, you're going to need and dust free. Make sure you don't have any dust. Um, you're going to need. A stir stick, that's just a dowel rod. I use it over and over. When I'm done, I wipe it off really good. You're going to need a pair of rubber gloves. I forgot to put them up here, but I didn't remember to use them. You're going to need three cups. You're going to need one to measure A, one to measure B, and then pour A and B together, and you're going to stir it. You're also going to need um, your heat gun that's going to pop any bubbles, and you're also going to need this. This is something that I discovered that is amazing and awesome and works really good and they're only a dollar. So, and what's cool, it's just like your rod, you can wipe it clean and use it again too. Just make sure that you set it upright so anything might drip down here that you don't catch. It's an adhesive spreader. It's hard plastic and it's got these little notches, but it makes spreading it super easy and makes it so you don't overwork the epoxy and that's the number one thing that people mess up is that they're overworking it you don't want to do more than three passes and this is your ticket to it so I'm going to go over the whole process here um, the first step that I took was I finished my top with unicorn spit I did my design I put my little um, I mod podged a little clear um, decal over it to make it prettier um, I painted my base and I wrapped it really well from the bottom up because I don't want the epoxy to gather around its feet with a drop cloth, just a plastic drop cloth. And it circled it around and of course I've got some cardboard down on the floor because our, the epoxy does tend to leak through regular canvas and also like when those plastic tarps take it from me. We've had quite the experience. <laughs> Um, so, I just like plain old cardboard. Plain old cardboard works the best. You just put it down on your floor underneath your feet, underneath your workspace, and you're good to go. So, I'm going to get set up here, and um, I'm going to start recording once I get done. So, okay, guys, I'm all set up now, and what I did is pour an equal part, um, A, or A and B, into some cups. And, I do it pretty easy. I measure up to the lip. Whenever it comes to a project that's pretty small, I just go up to the lip on one of the large jars. Bigger ones, I go all the way all the way up to about here. I've learned that more, make more than you expect to use because having too little makes you overwork it and you gotta start over anyways. So, you might waste just a little bit on the floor, but you're gonna have a perfect project. All right, the first step that you have, um, I've got all my jars here. Look at the time. Give me one second. But you're gonna stir for seven minutes, or six minutes. Six minutes you're gonna stir. What you're gonna do, you're gonna pour B into A. Make sure all of it comes out. Get your little dowel. Once you get the majority of it out, So there's your B cup. It's empty. Pour B into A. Now let the fun begin. You're going to stir in a circular pattern 
from the bottom and pull it up to the top. Be sure to scrape your side and also scrape your scrape your bottom. You're going to mix this up. This is mixing the hardener and the resin. So check your time and go for six minutes. Okay guys, <laughs> it has been a very quick six minutes. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get this ready now to go into the second jar. So all you do is take your mixture and pour it into your second jar. And you're going to scrape it off. Put it all on the bottom there. Now you have that done. I'm also going to put my gloves on at this time. Because I forgot. <laughs> but I can never have nice hands, you know. Purple or whatever color it is that I've been working with. Stain them. All right. So now you're going to look at your clock, and you're going to do it for another six minutes. So get to stirring. I know that it's 12 minutes of mixing time, but it sure beats waiting in between layers of polyurethane to dry, especially when you're able to get. 70 coats. Imagine how many days it would take you in waiting. So that 12 minutes to me is very, very well spent. So just get to stirring and you'll notice that you're going to have some bubbles in there and they'll start clearing up. And it's okay if you have some bubbles left over because we've got our heat gun that is going to take care of that for us. So stir, stir, and if you want, put it under your arm. And use it like you would fluffing up some stuff in the kitchen. <laughs> it seems to make the time go a little quicker for me to toggle between. <laughs> so stir up, guys, stir up. Okay, guys, I just got done stirring for my last six minutes. Um, I've got my top ready to go. I've got my spreader. I'm going to take my hand real quick and double check for any dust or lint or anything like that. And go ahead and get my stir stick and kind of wiped off here. This is how I do. Get this ready. I pour this. Pretty good 
it's me. And I can see them, they're popping on their own. So it's also a good chance for you to clean this. It's an easy way to do that, just to wipe it on your cardboard. And then just set it upright, wherever. It'll be like. All right, now we got that going. We're gonna let it sit for just a second. You're going to get your heat gun. You're gonna set it at 900 degrees, okay? You're just going to go over it. And you will see all these little bubbles just start popping like crazy. And you also notice that the big bubbles pop and the thermal wood closes up around that top area and makes it perfect. cure and through that time it's going to self level out extremely well so that's why it's very important to level your surface doing it in a closed room like in your basement or in your garage anywhere you don't have a vent on anywhere there's not gonna be high air circulation anywhere that it's gonna be about I don't know 65 to 70 or above is gonna be good you don't want to do it below 65 degrees trust me it'll but that's it every couple of hours since it takes that long you come in with your little glove I'm gonna put it onto the side and you're gonna take your fingers and you're just gonna double check this rim and re-smooth if needed and also take your fingers and smooth any drips so that's it Bama wood is not that difficult. The key is to pour B into A, pour A and B into a separate thing, and make sure you do with the six minutes. The timing is key. Then, once you put it on, pour it out as evenly as possible, and use that slotted trowel in order to get it smeared out. Don't worry about filling in all the holes immediately. Let it level itself out for a minute. It's not a race to the finish. Um, the only race that you have is not to let it sit in the jar in your little mixing thing for very long because it will harden in your jar and you'll be like, ah, shucks. So um, pour it on, let it rest, mix it right. Um, spend that 12 minutes mixing. Get your heat gun to pop any bubbles and believe in it because it works out of all of them that I've tried. And it makes unicorn spit just look three dimensional. It's crazy looking. It looks like these little angel wings are coming right off of that stained wood underneath. I don't know how or why, but man, do I love it. It's so cool. 